nitrogen prices go up, we don't want to waste any nitrogen on the farm at all. We want to conserve that nitrogen and keep it in the right forms and prevent it from leaching. To do that, we're going to ask for a little help. Rather than just putting straight nitrogen out, we're going to use some of the nitrogen stabilizers that are commonly available on the market. Okay, well, there are several steps when it comes to this nitrogen management. The first thing we want you to do is know what your soil can hold. Do a cation exchange capacity test and multiply that test number times 10 and that'll give you a rough idea. So for example, if you had a 15 cation exchange capacity, times 10 would be 150. Your soil at any one time can hold about 150 pounds of nitrogen. Don't overdo it from that. If you put on 200 pounds of nitrogen, there's a good chance your soil is going to lose 50 pounds of nitrogen, most likely to leaching, where the nitrogen will go down into the groundwater. That's a problem because you wasted money, number one, and number two, you've now contaminated somebody's water. That's not a good thing. When you talk about leaching, the reason why nitrogen can leach down in soil is when it gets into the nitrate form, nitrate actually has a negative charge and soils have a negative charge as well. So when you have two negative charges, they act against each other and repel. So that nitrate moves around in the soil water and is susceptible to leaching. The other primary form of nitrogen in the soil is called ammonium. Now ammonium has a positive charge and ammonium positively charged will bind fairly well with soil that has a negative charge. So if you can keep your nitrogen in the ammonium form longer, that's a good thing. That's what we want to try to do. In addition to that, with plants, they can bring in both nitrate or ammonium, but they're going to have to convert the nitrate over to the ammonium form once it's in the plant. In other words, if we can keep nitrogen in the ammonium form longer, it's going to mean that plants will more efficiently use nitrogen. If it converts to nitrate, again, it has to be converted back to ammonium inside the plant, and that's an inefficient way to use nitrogen. Well, keeping nitrogen in that ammonium form is important and protecting it from leaching is big too. That's why we hear a lot of talk nowadays about nitrogen stabilizers. Now, when nitrogen cost a nickel a pound, guys weren't too worried about it. They said, ah, I'll just throw a few extra pounds of nitrogen out there and if I lose a few pounds, no big deal. But now we're raising a lot higher yields. Our national corn average has gone up tremendously. So we're forced to use more nitrogen, which is a very key plant food for our plants. And as we're using more nitrogen and it costs a lot more per unit, we definitely need to protect it. So let's talk about some of the different types of stabilizers that are available today. Okay, when it comes to stabilizers, we've got two things we want to stabilize with nitrogen. Denitrification, where basically nitrogen is going to go up in the air, and then conversion into the nitrate form, and nitrate can leach pretty easily in soil and go down. So you've got nitrogen that could go up or go down. Either way, it's a bad thing. We want to hold it in the soil. One of the most popular products today is called Nutrisphere N. And what Nutrisphere N does is a couple different things. For one, it attracts nickel, which is part of urease, the part of the urease enzyme. With no urease, that means no denitrification. Now, sure, at some point you're going to start having some denitrification, but at least it's going to prevent that happening for a while. In addition, Nutrisphere N also attracts iron and copper, which means less conversion to nitrate. So that's a little about the science behind it. And with Nutrisphere N, it is widely sold across the country, a very popular product, but it's not the only one. Over the years, one of the first nitrogen stabilizers was NSERV, and now there's a new form of NSERV called Instinct. Those products work on the bacteria that are in the soil that will cause this denitrification process. So by slowing down those bacteria, they slow down the denitrification. There are many other forms of nitrogen stabilizers out there. I just think it's important to keep these products in mind that there actually is science behind them and they do work. I know in talking to our dad when we were growing up, he really questioned a lot of these products. But you know what? With the new science that we have now, these things are much better than what they used to be, much better than the old products that were on the market years ago. Now, if you're looking at a nitrogen stabilizer, there are a number of things you need to consider, or in other words, when are they most likely to pay? So if nitrogen prices are high, they're more likely to pay. If nitrogen use rates are high, if yield goals are high, if more urease is present, if cation exchange capacity is lower, and in higher rainfall situations. Well, one of the ways that farmers got around this, not having these products available to them, they said, well, maybe I'll just use some sulfur. And when I put yep. sulfur with the nitrogen, that seems to hold it a little better as well. And, and it's not really a nitrogen stabilizer like the other products are, 
but the sulfur products have shown less loss of nitrogen when you're yeah, using so, them in combination. So, for example, let's say you're using liquid 28% nitrogen and you throw in ammonium thiol sulfate that contains nitrogen and sulfur, it does seem to serve as a nitrogen stabilizer. Now, if, I don't know if it really does that necessarily or if it's just the fact that when you have adequate sulfur in the plant, your plant uses more nitrogen efficiently. Well, there are other sulfur products too. Enhance has been out for a number of years and that's shown improvement in nitrogen uptake and less nitrogen loss. There's a new sulfur product called Access, which is competing with ammonium thiosulfate, which happens to be very expensive and in tight supply this year. It's a good year for Access to come out too. Yeah, so when you take a look at all these different products and things you can do, I, I, I guess, the most important thing, again, going back to this, is make sure you know what your cation exchange capacity is, then don't overdo it. If you need to put on 200 pounds of nitrogen and your soil will only hold 100 pounds, you can say, well, I'll throw a nitrogen stabilizer with it. You know what? You're putting so much extra on. I wouldn't count on the nitrogen stabilizer to do that much for you. In that case, you're going to have to split apply nitrogen. And as our yield goals keep going higher and higher and higher, we need more nitrogen as farmers. So we've got to figure out ways to make sure that we don't lose it in the air. We don't lose it down into the groundwater. We keep it available for plants longer. When we're split applying the nitrogen like we're talking about, many of the studies that I've looked at have shown higher yields when we split apply nitrogen. And that's the strategy I'm going to use on my farm as well. Put some nitrogen out early, put a little bit more nitrogen out later on. Now the challenge with later application of nitrogen, if you don't have a pivot to water it on with, is you have to get some rain so that nitrogen can get into the plant. So whether you're injecting it into the soil or laying it on top, either of those ways can work. Broadcasting nitrogen over the top of wheat or corn really doesn't work. You end up with a lot of injury to that crop, so split apping has to be done in a responsible method. Well, one thing too that I wanted to mention, when it comes to water, the drinking water standard with nitrate is 10 parts per million. So in other words, you can have 10 parts per million of nitrate in the water. It's not hurting anybody, okay? But we really don't want to have nitrogen in the water if we can help it, because even if it might be safe for somebody to drink, it's still nitrogen we lost out of the field. So do everything you can to keep your nitrogen in the ammonium form, keep it available to plants as long as possible, and you'll have the best net profit each year. And when you talk about net profit, you have to control this week's Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 